Okay, so the last time we surgically removed the old replacement window without disrupting the WRB behind the exterior foam insulation. And we learned a sweet little trick for removing foam chunks. Cutting it a little short and prying it sideways to break it out. Now it's time to reframe and flash that opening and then install the window. That begins with carrying the window from the barn to the house. That's the real hard work. David is installing this window alone, and most window installation videos show two people doing it. To make sure the window is centered in the opening without being inside to check, he makes a center mark on the outside of the window and another one on the opening. Then he marks the width of the rough opening. I made my center mark where I want the window to be centered. I measure from there my rough opening to see how much he needs to fur each side. Since the window is 21 and a quarter, I want my rough opening to be 22 and a quarter, so I measure 11 and an eighth to either side, making a mark. And I can measure off of my stud to that mark to know how big my jam could be in the side. I need two inches of material in this side. And oddly, I need an inch and seven eighths on this side. He pads the opening with framing lumber of various thicknesses and plywood scraps. Inside, he measures from the paint lines so that the new exterior trim will cover them, and he marks the top of the window. I need the top of my window to be about that height. Inch and a half, so if I put a two by four across, one inch across the top, give me a half inch. My jam, my window is 60 and a quarter, so I want 61 and a quarter for my height. Now he measures down from there to determine where the sill should finish out. The old sill is sloped already, so the furring pieces will continue that slope as he works his way up to that line. Making up space for our sill here. Our sill in. He uses one by and two by stock to get to where he needs Shimming to be. it into place. He furs down the top and the opening is ready for what David calls sub-flashing. It's the layer of flashing tape covering the framing before the window is set. The weakest spot in a window opening is the bottom corner of the sill where water can collect if it finds its way in. Because this sill is sloped, it's vastly less vulnerable. But David also flashes the sill so that this vulnerable point will be triple protected. It begins with little corner pieces, followed by sill flashing folded down and sealed to the existing WRB. David's kind of old school and cheap. He uses non-stretchy flashing membrane because kids these days have it too damned easy with their flexible, stretchable flashing tapes. So I cut my pan flashing a little long. Before I put my pan flashing in, we could use flexible things, but it's not always available to everybody. And I like to work with good old reliable materials that you can get everywhere. So I put in the sacrificial corners first, and it's cut and stretched opposite of what else we're going to do, trying to get that little point there. The little corner pieces are just to provide protection to that corner of the sill. They're cut just shy of the corner, and then the flashing tape is stretched over the vulnerable point. The sill flashing is cut about eight inches longer than the sill, so it'll fold up each side a little bit. I like my pan flashing to go all the way inside. All the enough coming up that other side. Over a little bit. The sill is then cut and stretched opposite of how the little corner pieces were. Now I stretch that other one. I'm gonna put a little up cut. I just like that angle better. Then I stretch it like that. And then the jam flashing will provide triple coverage over that weak spot. This jam flashing is not meant to integrate with the WRB. It's strictly to protect the framing. The WRB will be integrated after the window is in the hole. He cuts the jam square to the sill and folds the flashing tape into the framing. Now the rough framing is protected from any water leaks and we can install the window. David lines up the center marks on the window and the house wrap and reaches for his level. And the level is happy. Oh, the level's so much happier. 
Usually the bottom corners are nailed, but when working alone, it's a little wiser to nail the top corners now, first. Now I'm level, because my sill is good. Because no one else is holding the window. I got my center mark, put a nail in, hold that. It's a little out of plumb. He pries the bottom over slightly to plumb the window and he sticks a nail in that corner too. I'm just sliding the window a little to the left to plumb it up nice. Setting a nail on the bottom. I'm going to put a nail in each corner to hold the window in place. Now he checks to see if the unit is square, which it is, and he nails that last corner before going inside to double, double check, check the placement of the window and make sure I have it in the right place. With the window centered, square, level, plumb, and nailed off, David seals the window to the original WRB, the Tyvek home wrap, installed under the foam. To make the best seal, fold the tape past the flange and onto the actual window frame. So like I said, I want this stuck to the window itself. So I bend it a little. The tape is actually wider than the flange of the window, one half of it peeled back. So I just put it like it's right up against the flange, going above the window so my head flashing can cover it and everything will be shingled. Then I can press my tape into my window and it gets on the window, the actual metal part of the aluminum, not on just the nailing flange. The side pieces of flashing tape should extend above the top of the window frame but not above the top of the window head flashing tape. And that top piece of flashing tape tucks behind the Tyvek flap cut earlier so that water leaks are always kicked out and away from the building. So we want good shingling. We have our house wrap up and there's no way I can stick this membrane to the top of the window because our head flashing of the window goes over it. But we'll still stick it onto the turn, get, have it taking the turn. Still a seam there. This fully integrates the window and WRB. Nothing's getting in, but if it does, it can dribble out the bottom. Put a house wrap over, nail it. And he nails the bottom corners of that Tyvek flap because he's a carpenter. Tape goes over the diagonal cuts, but the bottom is left open for drainage. Want to air seal the inside? Hell yeah. So we're, we're putting this in and we're pushing it all the way to the other side so that I keep a drainage line. Inside, backer rod is pushed into the gap between the framing and the window before the canned foam is squirted in to completely seal the interior and provide some level of insulation around the The purpose the of this backer rod is to maintain our drainage plane for the exterior. If water was to leak in, behind our old part, robust flashing, and can drain in that space created by the backer rod. When I put the spray foam in, it would stick to everything and fill that void, and it would take away any drain I want. All that's left to do now is replace the foam pieces that we surgically removed in episode two, and trim out the window with AZEC trim boards. <laughs>